Welcome to Conversations with Cupid. Thank you for joining me tonight and thanks for supporting these weekly conversations. Listen, I have a treat for you tonight. I have the honor of visiting with the legend, Reverend Dr. J.A. Reed Jr. tonight. So this conversation is going to be special. And again, I gotta thank you for joining me tonight. And maybe, just maybe, it's your first time joining the conversation. If so, I gotta welcome you to the family. Yes, we consider you family. My team and I are so excited that you found your way here. And to our regular viewers, thank you for all the words and encouragement that you send to my, e in, uh, my inbox every week, especially last week when we had Reverend Michael McDaniel and Reverend Coleman on the show. I mean, he, they had people fired up last week. It was a very <laughs> lively conversation about criminal justice and the black community. So anyway, just, just keep those comments coming and those questions and the comments and the words of encouragement, keep them coming. Uh, we, uh, right now, we're live on YouTube as we speak. So you can find any of the past conversations. If you wanna check that last week's conversation, you can find it on my YouTube channel. Just look up Conversations with Qubit. And once you get there, subscribe and hit the, the, the like button, please. We need to have these conversations more. So we've had some amazing conversations on, in the past. You will not be disappointed once you look back at some of those past conversations. But right now, I need you to do me a favor. I want you to share tonight's conversation. Please do not keep this conversation to yourself. We're with a legend tonight, y'all. Share this with your community. Now. Have you heard of Green Pasture Studios? Of course you have. If you watch this show all the time, you know that Green Pasture Studios uh, gives us a place to do our weekly conversations. They are a full-fledged movie production place. They do commercials, real films and movies. They also have a training academy. They actually teach people of all ages how to work in the movie industry right here in Oklahoma City. It's located in Spencer, Oklahoma, and they give us a very nice place to record and broadcast from every week. It's really cool stuff going out there, going on out there. Look them up online for yourself and you and see all the great things that they have going on. But tonight, we are not there. Tonight, we are in Northeast Oklahoma City at the historic Fairview Missionary Baptist Church. This church has been serving the community for more than 100 years. And our guest tonight has been the pastor for more than half of those years. You feel me? <laughs> Okay, before we jump in to tonight's conversation, I want to share with you my three simple goals for having these weekly conversations, and they are very simple. One, we want to add value to people and to our community. Two, we want to inspire you to believe in what people and communities become when we're willing to work together. And three, love people, period. That's it. All that means is I want you to be inspired. I want you to get useful information and resources, and I want to celebrate individuals, groups, and organizations who are making a positive impact in our community. Every conversation on Conversations with Cubit will be about information, inspiration, and hope. Now, joining me tonight, I'm so excited, y'all. Joining me tonight is Dr. J.A. Reed, Jr. Reverend Reed began his service at Fairview on the second Sunday of January, 1963, and has remained to this point, giving faithfully of himself to membership and as a servant to this community. And he has been serving this community so long and so faithfully, he is everyone's father. In fact, <laughs> he is affectionately known as Pop Reed. Yeah. And if I took the time to read his impressive resume, you would learn that his educational journey, faithful service in ministry and leadership has made him a highly respected and influential person across our nation. Now, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself to you in a minute, but I can tell you ahead of time that his humble spirit will only scratch the surface of his accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pop Reed to Conversations with Cupid. <laughs> I made it. Thank you. I made it. Well, I, I made it. I, uh, I'm just thrilled to death to, uh, to have this, what I call glorious privilege to, to share precious moments with you and oh, in conversation. This I, is precious. This is I, precious. Uh, and we I, and we I, have conversation all the time. Every time I ran into you at the tire shop and we had conversation. <laughs> so every time I see you, we have conversation. It could be a room full of people, serious, serious topics. And we've been sitting in some committee meetings and all this kind of stuff. It, like, I understand why it's pop read. Well, you know, I, I have uh, my, 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 my baby daughter always tell me that I, I talk to everybody. My oldest daughter is <laughs> really the talk of our family. 
And, uh, and after my wife transitioned, you know, my oldest daughter, uh, she's an insurance agent. And, she, and, and uh, uh, every morning around 7.30 um, while my life was living, wife was living and on her way to work, she talked to, she talked to her mom for, mm-hmm. for, for, from the 7.30 to 8 until she arrived she every, every morning. And if I answer the phone, she, she'd reach over and say, Daddy, 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 you were born. Get mom the phone. And so, <laughs> and so. Uh, I can't she, imagine you being yeah, born. And so she would tell me, she and I was, we always talk about her being the talk of the family. So after my, my wife passed away, uh, she started calling me early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to sleep, and she'd call me at 7.30 <laughs> early in the morning and, and, uh, and, and, I, and talk with me until she got to work, and, and she just talked, 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 and I couldn't get a word in. And I'd be so happy when she, when she arrived <laughs> Time to work. clock in, baby. I, I didn't know what to do. So, so one day, my, my daughter, my baby daughter's here at the church with me every day, so, so uh, that, that particular morning, I came to the church, and I said to my baby daughter, I said, I don't know where your uh, your sister had that, all of that talking from. I, I, I don't I don't know why she got it. She said Cherie said, Daddy, you don't you don't know? I said, No, I really don't have no idea where she got all of that talking from. She said, Daddy, she got it from you. <laughs> I said, what? She said, Daddy, you talk to everybody. See, everybody. It, it makes, wherever you are, you carry on conversation with everybody. And I said, well, I said to myself, I was like, well, you're right. I said, because <laughs> that's, 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 just a, that's just me. That's where I, wherever that's I am. You know? you what yeah. would you like to say out of that, all of that, that big old resume? What, if I said introduce yourself real quick, how would you, how would you introduce yourself? With all, with all the things of resume and all of that, if I had to introduce myself, and, and number one, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, number one, I'm a, I'm a Christian pastor, number two, and uh, if, I had, if, I, if I had to introduce myself, I'd have two words, but God. Ooh. No, I didn't ask you to preach. I said just introduce yourself, <laughs> and you just did all of that? <laughs> But God, you know, but God. Uh, uh-huh. all, these whole 60 years as a pastor and all of the servant of the community and all, two words, but God. Enough said. Yeah, Enough and, said. And, I, and I, I owe him all the praise. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's good. I want to have some fun with you. I know all the time when, we, when you get on <laughs> interviews and all this kind of stuff, they ask you all these serious questions and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I might do that here in a minute. But I, but I got these rapid fire quick little things I want to put in front of you. And I want you to, in one minute, just give me the first thing that come to your mind. And I know it's dangerous <laughs> get to the first thing that come off your mind. All right. But, but, we'll but, but you can handle this, okay? We'll see. All Ready? right. All right. First thing come to your mind. Uh, uh, you came, when you, when you, you, were, you came from a family of eight kids, I, I saw. That's eight right. kids. That's eight right. kids. And you are the child of a pastor, PK kid. That's right. PK. They say that the PK kids are the worst kids. They are. <laughs> and so I want to know what was the biggest trouble you got into as a young as a youngster. Oh boy, that's uh, you mean the uh, the biggest trouble I got into as a youngster. You mean and when I got caught. Is that when you're talking about well, when, when I got hey, caught? Statues huh? of lim- you have lived long enough to probably get past the statues of limitations, and I'm retired. So is anything you tell is safe? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, being a being a lad, first of all, young lad, first of all, growing up here uh, in Oklahoma City, uh, from the age probably of four up until the age of eleven, um, I lived right right behind the Fairview Baptist Church on Kellum Avenue. And uh, my family, uh, my, my dad, as you've already stated, was a, was a Baptist uh, preacher, pastor, and of course, at that particular time, he was pastor in rural churches. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we live right behind Fairview Baptist Church. And uh, of course, you know, I, I mean, you know, I was a young lad that, that, that probably was mischievous and, and all of that. And, and uh, I, uh, I probably got a, quite a few uh, whippings, we call them whippings, 
Back then, we I call them beatings. Beatings, I'm gonna say, yeah. yeah. A, a, whooping, a whooping was what you got in public. That beating is what you got behind the house. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom, you know, she was quite active with 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 the, with the whipping. And my dad would get us now and then. But there were so many things that happened in the community as children growing up. You know that uh, that we would be involved in with with the other children uh, on the block. And uh, and we had a uh, quite a few other children on the block on on Kellam Avenue and and all the way in the community and all the way up to Dunbar Elementary School where I attended school and so I got into quite a bit of trouble uh, you know uh, I, I never I never was a thief or anything but at the same time you know there were little things that we would pick up at the store and you know <laughs> wasn't a thief wasn't just a thing thief. came up wasn't missing a thief. Just, just, <laughs> we just happened to be walking by and pick up a piece of candy or something and then and we get in trouble and yeah. and we have uh, right down right down here on 6 and Kellum was the Allen grocery store, Mr. Mm -hmm. Allen. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was an African-American man that had a little grocery store there and there. And we got in trouble all the time. He, 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 he would, he'd tell my, my parents about me stealing candy and all of that. So that was some of the things we did. And you know, later on as I grew up into uh, to be a teenager after we moved to Stillwater and everything, you know, a whole lot of things I, I shouldn't have been doing. Uh, we, we, I remember we, I remember stealing watermelons and all of this stuff. <laughs> so I, oh, you know, I was I was a regular teenager. Yeah, yeah. regular teenager. Okay, yeah. let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Uh, we got it down here, but you don't pay no attention to that. <laughs> you don't pay no attention. Uh, if I said uh, Thunder basketball, what come? What's the first thing you gotta say? Thunder basketball. I mean, thunder, the Thunder is is our team here in Oklahoma City, and it's been our team for for a number of years. I had a few a little problem with them uh, a, a few years ago uh, uh, after Kevin Durant uh, left. Uh -huh. I had a few problems with the fans <laughs> with the fan. <laughs> because well, I'm a I'm a Kevin Durant. Uh, I'm a can I'm a I'm a Kevin Durant player. He is my player. That's your man. That's my man. Well, I overheard we were we were at dinner the other night, and mm -hmm. I overheard you talking basketball with Irv Rowland, and 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 I thought, no, this man is not just a fan. You you over the top when it comes to this NBA stuff in basketball. You 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 kind of well, you know. I, I played basketball. I di I didn't play any college ball, but I played basketball uh, all the way through high school. Uh, I, I played basketball and football. Because I, I was in a small school in Stillwater, African American school, black school, uh, Washington High School in Stillwater. So I played uh, football and played basketball. As a matter of fact, uh, my my last year in basketball, my senior year in basketball, which was in 1956, uh, we won the state C class basketball championship in Stillwater. That was the first year that uh, uh, that uh, black teams were allowed to play in white conferences in high school. And uh, and so we uh, we played through the district tournament and and uh, and uh, through the, the regional and end up uh, in the state tournament here in Oklahoma City. Uh, mm -hmm. Nationally, we wasn't playing the, the, the A-class you know, yeah, team. Yeah. Uh -huh. We were small, but, but we won the state ch uh, championship uh, that year, which was the first year that an African American team had won state championship in in in, in with, with white in the white conferences. So I played quite a bit of basketball. I made the all tournament team that year, you know, yeah. and yeah. so yeah. I, I, I I did quite well. Yeah. yeah, I know you're a big fan. I think I could probably take you right now. <laughs> I th you think so? Maybe. Well, I, I still can. You know, I told the church. Uh, I told the church not too long ago. I said, "Now you all think I'm sort of getting up in age and everything, but I want to tell you on right now, I can do a little bit of everything I ever done." <laughs> <laughs> It, it only take a little bit to beat me, so we, so we already, you didn't already so I, I was just you already you know, won. I can still, I can still play a little bit. Of okay, it. Yeah. all right, yeah. all right. Yeah. You, we'll talk a little bit about this in your, in, in, a, in a more serious uh, segment of the of the show, but I do want to hear well, the first thing that comes to mind because you got to meet and sit in the room with Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I had the privilege of meeting Martin. Um, uh, in 1963, I, I had, you know, I arrived in Oklahoma City 
uh, in January of 1963 and of course uh, became a part of the pastoral ministry here at Fairview with a, with a great uh, pastor, uh, uh, Dr. S.S. S. Farley, uh, who, 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 who had been here at Fairview for a number of years. But anyway, uh, uh, we were naturally affiliated and were still affiliated with the National Baptist uh, convention USA, which is comprised of about seven and a half million people. It's the largest uh, church, uh, Baptist church organization in America. Mm. Uh, black, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's comprised of about seven and a half million people, about 36,000 or more churches and all of that. And, and our church has been a part of it for, for over 100 years. But anyway, uh, they have different meetings during the year. And uh, the first meeting they had after I arrived here was in June, the, uh, the, third, the, the, the third week in June, which they call the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education, a week of class, a week of study and all mm -hmm. of that. And so that particular year, it, it was in Birmingham, Alabama. And, and, and I mean, and you know, at that particular, the civil rights struggle was in full bloom uh, uh, during that time. And at that, at, at that particular time, they were really, they were really, uh, it, was, it, it was really all the rallies and, and, and protests and all of that was really happening in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. at that particular time. Yeah. And here we are going to Birmingham and I, I, had the, I had the privilege of riding to Birmingham with my dad, with my, my father. And, uh, and so we, uh, you know, and at that particular time, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't stay in no, no white hotels and, and all of that type of stuff and eating white restaurants and all that. But, but in Birmingham, they had a quite a few uh, African-American, uh, we'll call them motels then, and also black restaurants and all of that type of stuff, and so we had had a place to, to stay. But uh, I think it was on that Tuesday uh, afternoon, one of the pastors here in Oklahoma City, Reverend E.J. Perry, who was a great pastor of the Tabernacle Baptist Church at that particular time, mm -hmm. who, who had succeeded his dad. And I don't know whether you've ever heard the name of the Perrys. Dr. E.W. Perry was a strong force here in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. for for many years and then his son followed him. But anyway, he and I was standing outside of the convention center talking. And, uh, and, and while we were standing there talking, up walked Martin Luther King Jr. and Ralph Abernathy. <laughs> Just walked up. Just walked up there. Yeah, and, and we had been informed that during that week that they had, they had canceled all the protests and all that kind of stuff because all of us would be in the city in, in, with, with that con conventional meeting. And, and of course, uh, uh, I guess they, they didn't know whether we wanted to be involved in all of that type of stuff. They, they had canceled all the protests you know, during that, during that uh, particular week. And so, uh, it shocked us. We we standing there, and 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 Martin Luther King Jr. walked up, and and we just start talking, just carrying on the conversation. You knew him and his and his importance. Yeah, you knew that. Yeah, I knew him, and and of course he knew he didn't know me. Right. But he knew uh, Pastor E. J. Perry because Pastor E. J. Perry's father, Dr. E. W. Perry, and and Martin Luther King Jr.'s father. We're friends. We're friends. Mm -hmm. Because doc, Dr. Perry had been one of the, Dr. Perry of Oklahoma City had been one of the vice presidents of our national work. Yeah. And so he, he spoke to, had asked Earl, you know, they called first names, Earl, Earl Perry, Earl, Perry, and, mm -hmm. and Martin and everything. And so Earl was, Perry was a little older than, than, than Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was quite younger then. And so we stood up and talked, and, and, and Earl, Earl Perry made him acquainted with me, and said, this is John Reed from Oklahoma City, and blah, blah. And so we, st we just stood up and laughed and talked for probably about 15 or 20 minutes, and all, you know <laughs> yeah. I mean? And, uh, and he was laughing about some things that happened. We were talking about going on, you know, about the protests and all this type of stuff. He said, well, we knew y'all was coming to town this week, so we, we, we decided <laughs> Suppose, Bonnie, we didn't want to get you all in trouble. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the most important thing about that is that that Thursday night, that Thursday night, they had one of their uh, rallies at, at 10 o'clock that night at the 16th Street 
Baptist Church. Now, now the histo history of the 16th Street Baptist Church was where they got bombed, bombed. about got bombed. two months later. In 1963? Yes. Two months later in August, they got bombed where those, those girls. young girls got killed. I was in that church on that Thursday night, the 16th Street Baptist Church, sitting in, right in the balcony where we just looked right down on the front, yeah. Sitting right in the balcony and heard Martin Luther King Jr. speak. Now, he, of course, you know, he was a Baptist preacher. He's already speaking, but you know. Right. But he, all, he, he was a great, great orator, but he was a Baptist preacher. He yeah. was a black Baptist preacher. <laughs> <laughs> and which means, yeah. which means what? Explain what that means. And that means when it comes to preaching, man, we, we, it's, we just give it all, you know, just, yeah, just, just all that we have, put, uh -huh. we put into it, and we we brought real actively involved with it, body wise, and all of that. Yeah, so yeah. he was he was active. He was moving around. He was moving around. Did he hoop? He, well, he didn't didn't hoop, but he got close to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, though, and and all of his group was with him: Andrew Young, Jesse Jackson, all that crowd. His his dad, Pop King. Uh, uh, all of that crowd was with him that night. Mm -hmm. And man, it was tremendous. That place was completely packed and all people were hollering and screaming all over the place. And, and you know, we were just excited. He just challenged us so until really it, they, they could have they, they could have left out of there protesting that night. I'd have been right in the crowd. I, was, yeah, it, it really, it, it just really stirred all of us up. Uh, and the message must have been, uh, uh, if he was preaching, it had to be gospel-centered, but it was still probably about civil rights. It's right, that's what it was, yeah. And, and, a, and, a, and a number of things that he was saying that night, I, I had already heard him say. Mm -hmm. You know, a number of things he was saying that night, I was, I'd already heard him say. But uh, because, you know, over, over the country, you know, nationally, he, 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 uh, he had various speeches and all that kind of stuff, but a whole lot of times he said uh, that uh, he'd say, you know, often. But uh, listen, I, I, uh, from, that, from that night, um, I told my dad, I'm going back home and I'm going to be completely committed to the struggle. Mm. And I meant that. I meant that, I'm, I'm, and I and I had already been been somewhat involved because when the uh, when the uh, sit-in started here in Oklahoma City with Claire Loop and them at Cat's gr uh, Drug Store, you, you you know it spread it all over over Oklahoma mm -hmm. and then spread all over the nation. It started here. They want to say it started in South Carolina, but that's not true. It start it started here and it spread it over. And I was living in Stillwater then and was a freshman. That was in 1958. I was a freshman student at Langston University. Mm. And I led the demonstration in Stillwater. Now that's not in the history book. That's not there. You won't it's, find that got, there. It is now, yeah. it's on history right now. You yeah. led the demonstration I, in Stillwater. I led the demonstration in Stillwater to help integrate the restaurants there. Right. right. And I had a number of teenage children was, that was following. Right. We, we got in some trouble. So you were already involved. Then when you, when you hear this speech, it's on and popular. Yeah, yeah, because you know, everything was right in the middle of the civil rights struggle. You know, you was hearing all about what was going on uh, uh, in, in the southern states and all. Uh, and uh, I, I just decided, you know, I, I want to be involved. And when I came back, that's what I did. And of course, uh, during that time, we had a, a number of things that, uh, in, you know, Martin Luther King. Uh, uh, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't have an opportunity to go to the, for the March on Washington. And the reason I couldn't go is because at that particular time I was a young poor Baptist preacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my funds were low. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I, so I, I, I didn't have the opportunity to, uh, to go to Washington for the, uh, for the, the March on Washington. I Which was I, in 63, right? 63. Right, it was in 63. Yeah, in right. 1963, you became uh, on staff here. Pastor here. Pastor yeah. here. Mm -hmm. uh, and all those things happened in 1963. All of those happened. 1963 was real important 
uh, real important uh, year. My, my, my oldest daughter was born in May of 1960. Okay. Yeah, her name was Lachey. I called her, I've called her Princess all her life. But she was born in, in 63. So 63 was a real, uh, President Kennedy was assassinated, assassinated in 63. The bombing, the bombing the, of the, the church. The, the, yeah, that's the right. speech. That's right. Yeah, and all the assassination. Of that, all yeah. of that happened in, in 1963. And so, uh, you know, it just, it, just, it just moved me to really become involved in what I did, you know. And then when Martin Luther King got assassinated uh, in 68, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 68. and uh, of course, uh, 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 actually, um, it was in 69 uh, when we had the sanitation uh, strike here. I'm going to ask you about that. Uh, so I want to know, back up a little bit. I, I, I want people to know, because I get this, the, I, I get to ask my father, we were just talking, you and my dad, the same age, Oklahoma City in the same time. Uh, he tells me in great detail sometime what it was like for him being in Oklahoma City as a black man before that time and then during the struggle. Can you kind of give some people some context? Well, what was it know, like? What, what was the struggle like before civil rights? Well, well let, me, let me say number one, is that's one reason I'm grateful. And, I, and I'm grateful and thankful to this age. When I look back on it, I, I think there were times when I wasn't grateful to be, to be black. I had, you know, I had that commitment. But, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and thankful to be a black man. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I've had the privilege and oppor opportunity to come all the way through the black liberation. Mm -hmm. See, I, see I, cause I've, I've, I've been part of it all my life, see, because I came through all of the, the, the part of the segregation uh, a, a time and all of that, uh, and the start of integration and all of that. See, I've I come through all of it. And, and I lived in Oklahoma City uh, and uh, this is, I mean, this is not a good thing for you younger people. I, I lived in Oklahoma City as a child uh, up until 11 years old, as I said, right back here on Kellum, and, and where African Americans didn't live, didn't live above 8th Street, and didn't live above, probably, uh, as far up as, uh, as past Lincoln. Now, they, 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 you didn't live below. You didn't now, live above. Like, what, a what was it like traveling past those places? You travel. You you know you couldn't you you couldn't you, you couldn't eat in any restaurants. Now I like 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 after I became a teenager, I was living in Stillwater. I, I worked in restaurants. I worked in a restaurant and uh, washing dishes and bus barn, the where I couldn't sit down and eat. The only thing I had to sit down and eat was in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and if I if I was on duty and everything, I could sit down and eat in the kitchen. They bring me my little meal back in the kitchen. Well, you know how I could look at a kid. You ever been in a restaurant kitchen? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I worked in one. Yeah, yeah, uh, and 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 I couldn't couldn't eat, and uh, uh, and and the same thing, uh, 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 riding on commercial buses. Uh, I had to ride in the back of the bus. Um, uh, you couldn't use restrooms if you're traveling on the highway. You, you could you could stop at a service at, at at what we call service station, then gas station, and they, they'd sell you some gas, but you couldn't use the restrooms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you know traveling long trips and everything, you you need to use the restroom. Right. But I traveled I traveled across a, a south with my dad and all where we you know we we'd had to wait to get out in the, in the out in the country side well, side or somewhere. Well, I mean I went I, I've been through all of that. Tell me, describe because you you don't ever strike me as a never have strike me as a fearful or a scary or a scared man. What was what was what was the fear level like living in times like that where you couldn't do natural things, just ordinary things. What if you decided to drink from the white water fountain? What if you decided to use the bathroom? What was stopping you from doing it? Well, the thing about it is, I think uh, up until the struggle started, I mean, we wouldn't even, I mean, we wouldn't, we know that we weren't uh, allowed to do it. You just didn't try it. So you didn't try it. You didn't even question it. Yeah, you know, you would be in the bus station 
the bus station, you know, like if you've been in a bus station traveling, they have an area, uh, a little area just for blacks to sit. You couldn't sit among the white. The water fountains, you, you know, they'd have on that, on that color. Uh, you know, so, so, so all I mean, I mean, I guess uh, like like when I was growing up, I guess uh, at that particular age, you know, we were we we grew up we grew up in it. We grew up Addition in it. Addition to it. Yeah. So, so yeah. So 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 we were we were we accepted that 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 that's that's that's, that's what we that's what we could do. Mm-hmm. That's right. Do you remember? Do you remember? how old you were or what you heard or what you saw, what you read, where you decided you wasn't accepting that anymore? Uh, I think that, I, I really think that, uh, that I, I really think when they started the uh, city-ins in Oklahoma City, mm. I think that's really started, that's started me. Uh, Cause I hadn't, I hadn't tried anything before then. Mm. I didn't, uh, and, and you know, of course, you know, I was at the age then, because I was out of high school then, so I was about the age, uh, 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 18, about 19 years old, because uh, I started preaching in 19. So yeah. about, about the age of 19, I started preaching in in uh, 57, at the age of 19. And, uh, but but we, you, you were accustomed to, to, to doing, and so you did that. But, uh, what started, I, I think what started everything here in Oklahoma, and there may have been some things done before then, but what started, the city-ins in Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. Really Claire start, Looper. Yeah, really started us in the, uh, really started us in the, uh, in the struggle here in Oklahoma. And, and, and the thing about it is, is what a lot of folk, a lot of the history folk uh, don't, uh, don't realize here in Oklahoma City, um, what happened was, is that uh, uh, Clara Luper started the city and with the children and everything, but there was a whole lot of community support, African American support yeah. that you, you that you sometimes you don't hear about. Yeah. Uh, they had an organization here uh, in the community and they had called they called it. Um, um, sometime I forget uh, 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 coalition for civic leadership. Mm-hmm. Coalition for civic leadership. That that organization we probably needed in, in in our community now. That that organization brought together all the black leadership in this community. Mm-hmm. It brought brought all the black leadership in this community, and we don't we really don't have that now because we we all going in our different ways and all of that, and 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 we really need some unity and togetherness and all of that for the future and we can talk about that later but <laughs> but <laughs> you, uh, you still working yeah you but, still working yeah, but you see you had yeah. the coalition was civic leadership and it was, and it was, it was the pr- president of it was 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 pop wk jackson and we we called him dr wk jackson pastor of saint john baptist church that that uh that organization was brought together uh to so all the little leaders the, the from the faith community uh, the business community, the education community, uh, uh, our, our attorneys, our medical folk, and all of those came together and, 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 and formed a united effort here in our community for the struggle. Now, I just said it better like that. Yeah, yeah. I, wanna, I wanna point out, because you just did something there. They said, we'll talk about that later. It means you're not done. Yeah. You indicated to me right now that we, we got we got a conversation we're doing here, an interview here, but you know that this work to still be done. It's, it's, it's much work to still be done, and we need to be unified to do it. Mm-hmm. it right. It's not going to happen until we that we that we become unified here in this community, yeah. like they were then. Right. The thing. The thing. The, the reason we had success in the struggle back. In the, in the late 60s and all, at the late 50s and 60s, because there were things that was happening even before the city ends, you know. Mm-hmm. What, uh, they, they, they built Douglas High School. And that, that, that organization was the organization that came together here in the community to get Douglas High School built. Mm-hmm. You see? So and tough. that was a struggle. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, the fairground was once. When, when I was growing up, the fairground was 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 on on yeah. Easter. Yeah, 
yeah, uh, yeah the circles that. and all of that was on. But that organization came together, and so when when the, when the sit-ins started, the sit in when, when Clara started that with those children, she had the support of that organization. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be ignored. Stores. And it couldn't be ignored. And the financing, ignored. the financing, and everything. Yeah. Uh, all of it. The, the 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 faith community, man, was 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 behind that effort. And and that and that's where all the financing came from, though. For 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 them to sit down there and 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 eat 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 hamburgers and drink cokes and all of that type of stuff. But but the financing all came because of that that organization. I like that. Now, because see, in in the in the uh, the sixties during the sanitation strike and all of that, all of the organized structure and all came through that organization. Most of the time, we'd be meeting down in, in the fellowship hall of St. John Baptist Church. And, and Pastor Jackson was over doing the sanitation strike. Man, listen, the largest march that's ever been in this community of the civil rights struggle was, was doing the sanitation strike. Right. In 1969. That's right. And I was there. I was, I was. Well, I, 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 I want to I I know about this truck <laughs> that you wouldn't get out of the way of. <laughs> You think I didn't do my homework? Yeah, I did my homework. This truck that you didn't get out of the way of. Well, in '69, they well, work. They say, "Hey, it's time for y'all to move. We're gonna go out. We're gonna do this work." And y'all said, "Let's keep praying." Well, well, look like that. Look like we weren't. We weren't. We were not uh, making as much progress <laughs> as we really wanted to make uh, during that s sanitation strike. And uh, and of course, so in 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 one of our meetings. Uh, uh, and what was happening was is that you know all the the black workers was on strike, but most of the white workers were staying on the job, so they were still moving them trucks mm -hmm. to, to pick up to pick up trash uh, every day, and so uh, so 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 Dr. Jackson along with the rest of us, we uh, we had a meeting and uh, and so he, we decided and he challenged us that what we need to do is we need to meet at the barn. Where the trucks start in uh -huh. the morning, and stand in front of those trucks, we're gonna stop them trucks from moving. Mm. And so he uh, he uh, he he challenged all of us, and I don't know what time that whatever day it was that we we had to be at the barn like like six or five o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. And we were there, but now a whole bunch of a whole bunch of them didn't show up now. A lot, a lot of men, a lot of strikers didn't show up. Well, they, they, they didn't show up to stand in front of their trucks. <laughs> a whole, whole, whole lot of, whole, whole lot of the faith. I remember seeing a picture. It uh, wasn't but five uh, or six oh, of us yeah. that stood in front of that truck. Uh -huh. Oh yes, 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 yes. It wasn't yeah. but about five or six of us that stood in front of that truck. No, but nobody fool you. Wasn't a whole lot of folks standing in front of that truck. Right. And I was standing right in the picture. They have the picture, they look, I had a picture. I was standing right next to, to Pop Jack. And, um, and of course, uh, uh, the truck kept moving. We were standing with our Bibles, and, uh, and, and Pop Jack was, was reading scriptures and everything. And uh, so we, we were standing with our Bible, and I'm standing right next to him, and that truck kept moving. Now, I, I, I must admit that I was afraid. Yeah. That's one time when I was, no, let me say it like I want to say it. I was plain scared. Scared. Okay, listen, this is a lot of people watching right now, live, and they want to know, you talked about what we're missing is unity. What is the next generation of black leaders missing? The, 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 what, what they are really missing is coming together in a united effort. And they, they can name it whatever they want to name it right here in our community. But what we need in the African American community, and of course, uh, we need what, let me say this, we need this among the African Americans in Oklahoma City, because I can't say just right here in this community, because we're staying everywhere. We're now. everywhere, we're all over the city. We're all over the city. But I tell you what, uh, the most of the faith, African American faith uh, churches are in this community. We got some spread it out now, but most of them, majority of them here. Because, you know, one thing about it, we've got black stands everywhere now, but uh, if you really want it to, to kill up some blacks, you know the best time to do it? 
Well, let me tell you. It'd be on Sunday morning. 11 o'clock. Well, yeah, because, because, back because, 10, yeah. because they join, they 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 they, they travel back in northeast. Back, back, yeah. They come to church. Worship. Now we got some that says members of of white churches and all of that across the city and all that kind of stuff. But but the majority of African Americans travel back to northeast Oklahoma City. I'm gonna make the next question personal, mm -hmm. Pop. What do you? I'm not a pastor. I'm not. Uh, I'm not one of those. Uh, uh, I'm not an elected official or any of that stuff. I'm a member of the community, loves the community, want to see it do better. What do you want me to do? What do you want Waylon Cuba to do? Well, what, what, you, what you can do, uh, actually, if you, if, if you was a member, if you was, now if you was a member of Fairview, and of course I'm sure you can do it with, with, with other church and other pastors. It, it, you know, let me, let me say it like I want to say it. When, when, <laughs> when, 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 the, when God started passing out sense, he didn't stop with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what ideas and all of this. I listen to my members. I, I listen to my younger, my young adults. I listen to the children. I get, I get ideas and all of that type of stuff. The thing that you, people like you can do is, 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 is if you, you know, uh, uh, those things that, that, that you feel like that you, that you need to happen in the community and all this kind of stuff, uh, you need to go sit down and talk with those who are leaders. Mm -hmm. You need to go sit down and talk to a leader and say, 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 come down and say, Pastor Reed, I think that, uh, you know, I think that it'd be a good thing for us to, to move in this direction, you know. And I'm going to sit up and tell you, well, Keyword, let me, let, me, let me think about it and everything and, and all of that type of stuff. And, and most in general, if, 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 it's, if it's something I, that I feel that that's going to be great for the community, then 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 I'm going to I'm going to take that idea and use it and give you credit for it. Yeah, I want to tell. I, I think I need to share this, and you will probably remember this. We were sitting uh, we were sitting in a, a meeting together in this group that I'm in called the Oklahoma Justice Circle. We were planning a, our first Breaking Bread event. You just came mm -hmm. to one last week. We mm -hmm. we sat together last week, and uh, we were organizing what we thought was going to be a very needed conversation between African American and white citizens of Oklahoma City. And we wanted to have a very intentional conversation about race relations. Mm -hmm. uh, this was right before uh, COVID. This was right before the 2020, that, that, that dreadful day before they shut down all the NBA and all that stuff. This okay. was right before that. A month before that, we had a meeting and we were trying to organize our questions. What were we gonna ask the crowd to discuss at their tables together? Uh, we asked you to come in and evaluate our questions that we were gonna ask. You read the questions, you set the questions down, and then you read us the riot act that we were being, uh, we were uh, being a little soft with the question. We were not being direct enough. You, we were wasting people's time with soft questions. You wanted us to hit the situation to, to go to the situation head on. Talk about, and it was, and it was, and it changed everything mm -hmm. for, for the meeting and the direction of those. And now we're on, we're, we're, we're into our seventh break and break. Oh yeah, it was 300 great, it was great. People, it was like, outstanding last week. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell people why you don't want us to, to, to talk softly, just be authentic and true about race relations in Oklahoma? You, you, you well, uh, my dad used to tell me, you know, you, you, you've got to say it like it is. You got to you, you got to <laughs> tell it like it is. Uh, and 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 I've I've received uh, sometimes some criticism uh, myself for doing that. But but I think that it's just like if I, if I really if 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 I if I really if I if I really don't like you because of something that you've because of something that you've done to me. Mm -hmm. I ought to be a man enough to tell you, women, well, I don't like you, and tell you why. Mm, mm -hmm. So that's where I've always been with, 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 with white people. Yeah, you said it. You yeah. said it. I, 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 I've stood up a number of times and, and said, and I, and, 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 I, and, and, and John Minthal tell you, I stood up in his, his church and, and said it. And, and I was there. I was there in a, a panel on race relations, 
and 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 they were just you know no, nowhere around what we need to be talking about. <laughs> And so I, I asked for the mic, and they gave me the mic, and I said, are, are we going to be honest here tonight? I said, we're really going to be honest here tonight? I said, well, let me, let me be honest with you all. I said, I really do not like white people. And when I said that, it was, man, you could have heard a pin drop. You're right. If I can feel it now. It ain't yeah. nobody in here, but yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can feel I said, it I now. I really don't like white people. But I took, the, I took the time and tell him, I didn't say that I don't love white people. <laughs> I said, I really don't like white people. Yeah. And, and, and I took the time and expressed why I didn't like white people. And then I turned around and told him, listen, let me say to all of you all, and, and the place was full, let me say this to all of you. If I, if, if I had done to you what you have done to me these many years, you wouldn't like me. Right. It's simple as that. It's that simple. If, if, I, if I had done to you what you have done to me, when it comes to segregation, when it comes to discrimination, and all of that, listen, if, if I had treated you like you've treated me, mm. you wouldn't like me. Right. And I got to, you got to say that plain. Mm. Man, look, look how, I cannot, look how, look how you've treated me. Just take a look how you really treated me. Mm. Inhuman. Right. You said that in that meeting. And it changed the whole <laughs> scope of our questioning and our conversation. And it, is com it, it has grown. And I believe that that event has become influential in our city and impactful. We talked about gun violence without fighting last week. Listen. You've, 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 you've got to be honest, black and white, have got to sit down and be honest with each other. And, yeah. and that's what, that's what and, 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 and we're, still, we're still not doing that. Not from, 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 from the government on down to the education, to, to uh, economics, all of that stuff, man, we're still not being honest. Mm. Yeah. I get it. And 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 uh, and so you know, it, like I said, we we still have a long ways to go in this matter. But 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 as African Americans, we, we've got to continue to be honest and stay and stay stay in the struggle because we, we're still not there. And and I'm in the, you know, I'm in the uh, I'm 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 in the sunset. Of, of 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 my of my ministry, I, I you know I, I I know nobody can go on forever, and 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 I don't know how long the sunset will be. I hope it'll be a long time. But, well, well, but, well but, yeah, I can tell by but, your by your spirit that you but, ain't planning on. But, but I'm yeah. I'm I'm just now ready to ready ready to fight. I, I listen. I'm 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 still excited about the future of us as African Americans. Listen, right. listen, we still, listen, we, 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 and we've got to come together in, in, in Oklahoma City, come in the black, the blacks of Oklahoma City, we've got to come together and unite us. And I think, I, let me say this, I think you, uh, you are younger, uh, you are younger uh, men and you younger women are moving towards that, uh, bringing unity. It feels like it. Yeah, it right. feels like it. I, it, I, I, it feels and, like and, it. And I, I'm feeling that way. But, but, but you can't stop now. You got, you got to keep working. I mean, you, you've got to come together and unite together. That, that's, that's, uh, to unite together. Listen, it, it, can't, it can't be accomplished without a united effort. It's, it's got, unity must exist among you all here uh, in the African American community, I got two more questions. Mm -hmm. I got two more questions. And, and one is all of that stuff, all of that struggle, and you call it struggle. Uh, we're we're in a we're in a fine building. There's there's fine houses all the way around this place now. There's been a lot of advancement for people, right? For for black people in Oklahoma City and in this nation. Uh, it's, and I want to acknowledge that we still have a lot of things to accomplish, a long ways to go. But what are you most proud of? What are you most proud of 
uh, and all the struggle and all the fight and all the leadership and all the things you've done uh, in the ministry uh, and, and all the kind. When it comes to the struggle, and I know there's a lot of accomplishment in the ministry and, 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 and stuff, but what are you most proud of in the struggle for civil rights as it relates to Oklahoma City and how far we've come? As far as I'm concerned and as far as I'm concerned individually, I am completely proud of the fact that I have committed myself as a servant in this community for 60 years. Mm -hmm. I've only tried Wayman to serve, mm -hmm. nothing else. Didn't care whether my name was called. I'm, I'm not, not concerned about all of that. Not my name, uh, on, you know, in, in the newspaper and all of that type. I haven't been concerned about n none of that. I've been trying to be a servant in this community to serve my people in the struggle uh, for equality and for our freedom. Mm -hmm. That's all I've tried to do. Yeah. I've tried to be that kind of leader, and I'm hoping others have been like me. I, I, and I, I feel that way because of the fact that we have, we have, uh, we, we we have made tremendous progress uh, here in the Oklahoma City area in 60 years. There's no question about that. And uh, many of those, uh, many of those uh, gyrants, as I call them. Uh, uh, have been called from what I call labor to refreshment. They've gone in to receive their rewards. It's not, it's not many of us left that was that come along with that crowd. And, yep. and even in the faith community, I, I, I was at that particular time. I was the youngest pastor. Oh yeah, yeah. Nineteen, you was the youngest. I don't know if you know. There's, uh, you might be. What's I'm thinking of, uh, Reverend Parker. Reverend Parker, of course, he's 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 not pastor. He's not anymore, pastor, but you. Yeah. But the oldest pastor in the community is Pastor Peoples in age. In age, I'm the oldest in, in tenure. Uh -huh. In tenure, I'm the oldest pastor in the community, uh, and probably African American in the state right now. Uh, we had one pastor was in Oklahoma, Pastor Jackson, that passed a few uh, last year sometime, who had who had been who had pastored his church for 62 years. Mm. But at the present time, you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the oldest uh, uh, pastor in tenure. Pastor Peoples, like I said, he, he, he has me beat probably a, a little over three years, you know, yeah. in yeah. age. I yeah. want to talk about this uh, mm -hmm. because uh, March the 24th, I'm headed to uh, down to the, what we call it back in the day, the Cowboy Hall of Fame. They, said they, got, they, they got a whole other fancy name for it now. <laughs> but it's always it. the Cowboy Hall of Fame. I still here. call it. That's the only name I <laughs> right. know. Yeah. But, it, but on 24th, we get, to, we get to honor you for 60 years of pastoral service. Uh, and you got, you got uh, this wonderful program you, you share with us. But it's not just that one night, right? Because that, that night is the gala. Yeah, that's that the game. That's when that's when you wear your best suit. That's right. You get your dress, you get up. Your dress up. Dress up. Dress up. Put on your bestest. Right, right. <laughs> You'll expect to see a, a, a lot of folks in politics, in leadership, yeah. past politics, in in pastoral ministry, all over from across denominations. Yeah. Uh, that night, it is going to be an impressive night, and I cannot. I, I'm so glad that that I have a seat. I, didn't nobody give it to me though. I was. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to get a free seat, but it, anyway, anyway, it didn't, it didn't happen. But you have all this kind of stuff. You want to talk about that night, or and uh, invite who should be there? Well, uh, you know, I, I, let me say it this way: uh, it's 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 a night that the church is 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 set aside to uh, to celebrate their pastor of sixty years, <laughs> and uh, so so uh, as far as the the committee has 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 really planned the gala. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've just been sitting by watching <laughs> <laughs> things happen and things going on. And, you know, yeah. and they are, they are actually say they have planned it and they're doing all the work. You just got to show all, up. And so all I've got to do is show up right. that night. And that, that's what I plan to do is show up and sit down. Right. Uh, but but I'm, 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 I'm truly grateful, you know, uh, to, to the church, I got a, a tremendous, uh, a tremendous church, a tremendous um, congregation, 
uh, uh, to uh, to work with here at Fairview. I, 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 I and I and I want to compliment all of them because uh, they are truly um, loyal uh, to me, and and they've yeah. been that way uh, for 60 years. I have no reg never no regret. I tell folk all the time, sometimes they kind of upset me sometime and I, I want to get in my car and never look back. But, but keep coming back. But, 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 I, but I keep coming back. Right. And, uh, and I, I thank God for it. Uh, it's, been, it's, been, uh, it's been 60 years that I've, only thing that I miss about it now, you know, my wife uh, transitioned and I wish she was here with me to see the, see the 60s, but uh, I, I feel her presence. Mm -hmm. I feel that she's here with me uh, to, to, to uh, witness uh, this uh, 60s uh, year. And, and of course, like I said, I'm not, I'm not tired yet. Somebody asked me the other day, uh, when, when you're going to retire, I said, is that a word? <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> but, but, but I have tremendous help in our co-pastor who, who really, I don't use the word son-in-law, but, but he's, uh, he's my, my baby daughter's husband. Yeah. And, uh, and he's a tremendous uh, a help here at the church. My classmate. Yeah, my he, classmate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, listen, Millwood. Yeah. <laughs> listen. Hey, he, tell him, tell him, tell him the best, tell him. Go on, tell him. Go on, say with me. Go on, tell him. Go on, tell him. Tell him. The pride of the east side. Tell him, Pastor. The pride of the east side. Tell him. Pride of the east side. Douglas. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, take the camera off here. <laughs> listen, I, I appreciate it. Listen, I, got, I know so many of your members around here. I, I know so many of your members. And I do want to tell you that I hold the pastor responsible for their membership. Yeah. And, 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 and Donna Thompson, I work a lot with Donna Thompson. <laughs> and I hold you responsible <laughs> for Donna Thompson. Well, Donna Thompson, I have to say, I have to say, I have to take the blame. You got to take the blame. I, I, okay. I have to take the blame. Donna and the credit. And the credit. And the blame and the credit. That's right. Okay. Donna, Donna is Donna. Is some lady, she she's one of what I call my trophy here at Fairview because <laughs> I, I was I, I was the I was the pastor to help really turn her life around. And uh, and I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. Uh, you know, uh, in the, in the in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul was the individual who was um, persecuting the church and going about cursing the church, arresting all of the Christians and all of that type of stuff. And uh, and as you know, being a Bible student, uh, his life was changed on the Damascus Road. His life was changed, so he went as hard. He went harder after his life was changed than he was going before yeah. to, to stop all the Christians. He went harder to go get them. Go get them. Yeah. And so that's what Donna's done. Boy, she, boy. She's a tremendous. Uh, you know, she she She's works with that, that the prison, prison ministry, ministry of the church, and and has been doing it for over twenty years. And uh, yeah. so she. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hats off to Donna, but I know now I'm, I'm looking him up if you get out of line. I'm looking him up. I, this, is, this is it. Stay in line, Donna. Listen, yeah. we are so grateful for you. And if you need information about attending the gala uh, on March the 24th, go to the Fairview Missionary Baptist Church Facebook page. Find all the information you there. I think the deadline is yeah, the 10th. The website too. Yeah, it's yeah. a website. Go to the website. Go to the website. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the deadline is the 10th. That's we right. don't do late. Right. We don't do late, so right. you got to get you got to get your tickets uh, and your reservations. Get a table. You want to be there on March 24th. It's an honor and a privilege to to know you, have worked alongside you, and now to document some of this history on Conversations with Cubit. Thank you for 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 being well, with me. God you right. for, for, for just just <laughs> inviting me to come on and share with you. I, I, I've enjoyed it. It's been a, it's been a great privilege. That's good. Me. Let's go watch yeah. some basketball. Yeah. Let's yeah, yeah, conversation yeah, I'm on with a, I'm the thunder. The thunder. <laughs> you 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 know you keeping me from a game, man. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's let right. me see what it is. Eighty to seven to six. They behind. They behind. Right now. Yeah. They behind. What is that, the third quarter? Are they in the third quarter? Oh, they got plenty of time. Yeah, they yeah got plenty I, I, time. I can get home and see the next yeah, quarter. Yeah, we'll, we'll take care of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think my, my, uh, I think my.